Haymaker, Emily here, otherwise known as That Mom with a Laser and the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made several wedding signs for a wedding that I attended over a year ago. You see, I waited to the last minute to make these signs. I found myself making three signs in three days that I had to package and fly with me to New Orleans and it was, quite frankly, a disaster. <laughs> I was under a lot of pressure, anxiety, and rushing, and you know, I ended up making the signs and they turned out beautifully, but getting to the finish line was chaotic. And so I finally looked back at that footage and I think there's a lot of valuable lessons in this, so I highly recommend that you watch through the end because I promise you're gonna learn a thing or two. And with that, let's get to it. All right, so I've just about finished prepping all of my uh, signs digitally. There's a couple of things I wanted to point out to you before I start getting ready to cut. So you'll notice here that um, I've got B with a heart and cam, right? And so this right here is called a glyph. You know, those pretty swooshes and, and uh, flourishes that you add to fonts. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're new, that's you don't even know what that is or how to access them, okay? Usually they're hidden, um, or you at least have to do a little more digging. So to add, see, without it, if I just typed the name, let me show you over here, B, I don't know what, you know, button to push on my keyboard to get the heart, you know, I'd do and, and then the name, right? But we don't wanna do that. I wanna add a pretty little heart, okay? So I had to <laughs> do a lot of digging because it was hard to find a font that would do this, but this one turned out really pretty. So I'm gonna go over to my font book. If you're on a Mac, it's the font book. If you are on a PC, then you wanna look for um, the character map, okay? And in the character map, that's where you're gonna find um, the add-ons. And I, I think when you're in a PC, you have to go to Unicode subrange, okay? Just do a search for how to find glyphs on a PC and you'll, you'll be able to find it, okay? So I'm gonna go to my font, which is called Go Live. And then I'm just going to search for the letter that I want. So in this case, I want the um, I want the heart to be in between the B and the name Cam. So I need a K. Where are you, K? Here, with the heart on the left, right? So I'm going to do cop, um, Command C to copy it, and then I'm going to come over here and Command V to paste. See that? So now all I have to do is write in the rest of whatever it is I'm trying to write. And then I've added my glyph, okay? That's the first thing I'm gonna do there. That was easy. Now you know how to access them and add pretty swooshes to your fonts. Um, let's see, now I wanna import, actually I, I wanted to show you that before I converted this to path. So now I'm gonna take this, add my offset outward and create my score line and my cut. Okay, that's ready. All right, so step one is to, let's see, I am going to change the output. I'm going to hide the output for my cut layers, okay? And I need to score the pattern on each one of my signs. So I'm gonna mark the center on my signs and then one by one, I'm going to select this make sure I have a center origin. And this way, when I send it over to the laser, I'm gonna point my, my red dot pointer right here. This green dot is the center of my file. I'm gonna point that red dot pointer in the center of my, um, my wood or my acrylic, and then I'm gonna score the pattern. Okay, so this is a quarter inch double-sided frosted acrylic and if you notice the masking for whatever reason is coming off so that's a fire hazard waiting to happen so I'm definitely going to peel off the masking tape and then I'm going to find the center and mark the center point and then I'll take it over to the laser and score it. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna leave the backer on for now just so I can keep the back as clean as possible um, and then I'll peel it off at the very end.
Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import my other signs because I want to start nesting together my letters so I can maximize my material. I know a lot of people, they might just take this one piece here and cut it out on their acrylic and then use the acrylic as a template, but I think that's very wasteful. I don't want to waste my acrylic. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, so now that I have scored my patterns, I'm ready to go ahead and start nesting my letters so I can cut my acrylic. So I'm going to bring back my output for my, um, my letters and I'm gonna hide my score pattern because I'm done doing that. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and now I'm going to build out a frame for my white piece of acrylic. So I'm going to grab my uh, rectangle tool here. There we go. My acrylic is 20 by 19. I'm sorry, by 12. Okay, so now I'm going to size everything to fit within here. Okay, so I've nested everything. I'm just about good to go. Now I am going to deselect the output for the letters and I'm only gonna cut my rectangles, okay? So I'm going to come over here, add my settings and get ready to send it over to the laser.
you know, I'm watching this footage and I'm editing it for you guys and I'm watching myself and I'm like, what? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, if you recall, I did say that I waited to the last minute to make these signs. I was just a ball of anxiety, even though I look like I'm keeping my cool um, as I, you know, record stuff for you here. And I mean, I know why I did this, but I'm mad at myself for not realizing that I didn't need to do it this way for this particular project. Let me explain. So let's pretend that you have a sign that you're working on and you need to cut out a name that is five inches long by two inches tall on your acrylic, but you don't want to put 3M on the whole sheet of acrylic. That's when you can use this little technique that you see me using here, where you first cut out a rectangle, you take it out of the acrylic without moving anything, you place the 3M and then you put it back in and then you cut that name. This way you don't use up all your 3M and you don't, um, you know, lose a piece of acrylic that you may not need adhesive on the back for a different project. That's when you do this. You don't have to do this when half of the sheet is the same color. I mean, I could have just, you know, put 3M on half of that sheet if I really wanted to, then run all these cuts. But I don't know. Again, I was not functioning properly. I was rushing and just making rookie, rookie mistakes. So anyhow, that's why I'm doing this chaos that you see here. Okay, so I'm done doing that. And now I am going to um, deselect the output for the cuts that I just did. And now I'm going to cut out my letters. Okay, so all you see me doing here is using painter's tape so that I can keep all of the pieces together. It's easier this way so that, you know, if I lift up the the rectangle and then have all my pieces loose, it's not a big deal, but then I waste more time fishing out my letters and, you know, lining them all up and, you know, you risk maybe one E is slightly larger than the other and yeah. So this is just the way that I can keep it organized and um, more efficient. Now all I have to do is work section by section. So I know that I'm working on the date here. I'll take off my letters. I'm gonna line up my rectangle with my scored letters. Now, technically I don't need this rectangle to get the letters perfect, but sometimes, um, you believe it, even with scoring, you might be off just a hair. So. I don't know, this is just another way to do it if you wanna be even more meticulous about lining everything up. So I'm using it as a template. And then I am going to take some more painter's tape to hold it down so it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to stick the letters in place.
All right, so now that you get the idea for the acrylic sign, I'm gonna move on and talk to you a little bit about my experience with the wooden sign. So I have a couple of older tutorials on how I do the wood signs and I will link them below in the description box for you, but basically it's the same process. You know, I got these um, pieces of wood. I wanna say they were roughly, oh gosh, I can't even remember, like 18 by 28 and I had them cut to size down at Home Depot. So I have two of them as you see here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just sand them. And then I'm gonna move on to um, staining them. Now, because I was in a rush, remember? <laughs> I did this three days before I had to pack and leave and package it into a box. Um, I opted not to go with an oil-based stain because those, I just feel like they always need more time to cure um, then you have to seal it. And so I ended up using a water-based stain. I have a video on that too, and I will link it in the description box. So once they were dried and ready to go, then it was just a matter of, again, scoring the pattern and gluing on the pieces. Okay, so you're gonna hear some talking in the background. That's because I am blessed to have my in-laws here to help with the kids while we go out of town, but you can tell it's getting frantic because I'm freaking out, my hands are shaking. I'm trying to stay calm, but uh, you guys like me, to, like me to show you guys the, the mess ups. So this was such a royal, horrible mess up. I'm so mad at myself. I scored this yesterday with the intention of cutting it today. No problem, right? Perfect. But I don't know what I was thinking. I resized it because I wanted it to be a little bigger. That created two huge problems for me. One, I didn't save the file. I didn't save the file. I am so mad at myself. Look what happened, guys. Look at this. All right, this was the one that I resized. So when I cut it, I realized, oh my goodness. <gasps> it's too small. My score lines are visible everywhere. And I tried. I tried, I really did, I tried measuring, but nothing wanted to line up. Problem number one. So I ended up wasting, you know, sacrificing really good acrylic, because I only have one sheet of white acrylic left. So I tested all of these to finally get it right. So, so nerve-wracking. But then, guys, when I resized it, I made it bigger than my 19 inches of acrylic. So it was 22 inches long, but my acrylic's only 19. So I had to go in and adjust this so that instead of it being one continuous piece, it now touches. And that's not a big deal. I was able to save it, but boy, was, would that have been a disaster if I didn't know how to just slice it up there. Does it hurt you to watch that footage? Because I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember how much pain I, and suffering I was putting myself through. But there are lessons to be learned here. So I'm gonna show you how I broke up the names so that I could still finish the project. So as you recall, I'm saying in that video that my acrylic was 19 inches wide, but I resized it on the original artwork to 22, which caused such a headache. So then I had to get crafty and figure out how to break it up. So I was, I decided I was gonna break it up right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna duplicate my original, okay? And I'm just gonna bring it down here out of the way for a minute. Okay, let me zoom back in. And now I need to convert the font to path because right now Lightburn is recognizing this as a font and not as a shape. So I'm gonna come over here, edit, convert to path, done. Now, 
I'm gonna select my nodes feature and I should see all these little nodes pop up. Fabulous. Okay, so I need to break this apart. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over this line and this one here and I'm gonna delete this line. So I'm gonna hold down the D letter on my keyboard and delete that. That was my phone, it wasn't yours if you're watching and you heard that. <laughs> Let me put my phone on silent. Okay, then I am going to grab this one right here and make it connect, boom. So now I have detached this part of the word. So I'm gonna group this all together because right now it's not, because I converted it to path, I'm gonna lose all my centers there, okay? So I'm gonna grab it all and see what I'm doing there? I'm clicking above to the left and making sure I have the entire thing within my square to select it all and grouping it together, okay? Then I'm gonna come back here to this one, go back to my nodes feature and bring it up to here. And I'm gonna grab my pencil tool and draw a line right there. You can't see it at the moment, but if I move this, there I did it. Okay, so before I group that, I'm just gonna take, I mean, it looks fine. I don't have to be this picky, but I'm gonna hover. Let me change this to a different color so I can see it when I line them up. I am going to check and see that my lines still curve the way um, that they should. So let me, I'm gonna kind of click that in place. So you see here, when I dragged my line, I kind of brought it down. So I wanna fix that. So I'm gonna move this up and this one up. Oops. You see what I'm doing there? And then I need to grab that line that I added in because I'm not positive that it's right anymore. And I'm just gonna make a new one. Take my pencil tool. I'm gonna make it red. Hmm. It's close enough. There we go. So now if I move this out of the way and I delete this blue one, now you see here I gotta get in close here, make sure they touch, boop. That works. Okay, so this should this should work. All right, so now I need to go back in here, grab all of that one and group it together. And now I can get the whole thing to fit on my acrylic, right? I can trip it over, whatever, to nest it in and get it to fit. So that's how I saved the piece. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this disaster. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then sizing these was another nightmare. Can you feel the stress in my voice? I'm sorry. Okay, so these, none of them fit. And every measurement, every test piece didn't fit either. So now I have to, I can't use, you know, I can't use this like a template and just set them all in to get them perfect. Now I have to, you know, use this as a, like a guide to get it all straight. So I saved myself, but this was a lot more stress, especially since I'm supposed to be leaving in like three hours and I haven't even packed for myself. Total disaster. But here we are, I'm almost at the finish line. Thank goodness. All right, here I go.
Oh my gosh. I'm gonna die. Nope, I'm gonna freak out if this does not. Oh! Don't panic, Emily. <gasps> Shit. The relief in my face here when I finally got to New Orleans was no joke. <laughs> the only thing left to do once I was, um, you know, there was demask everything and hand it over to the wedding planner. Maker, that's all I have for you today. I ended up having a great time at the wedding. New Orleans is such a charming city, and I really hope that you found value in today's tutorial. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you like what you see here, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below uh, if you learned anything new or if you have any feedback from my experience. And with that, I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a laser. Yeah.